as long as the gremlins are ready, I'm ready. Uh, gremlins, are you ready? Well, that was interesting. Hello and welcome to the Rich and Wizardry Podcast, episode 145 for Thursday, the 12th of October, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek and boy doozy have we got a wowsy for your whatsy <laughs> Kent, how you doing tonight <laughs> man i'm doing great uh that was one of your most amazing intros of all time it's it's um, gonna be a show man it's like it's gonna happen yeah uh why don't you introduce our guest because she's way more important than me okay um so of uh, I, I was trying to think of this on the way home. I hope to, to get in home in time to write a proper introduction and everything else. There are certain people in the world of tech and geek that really just amaze me, and, and I love watching them and watching what they do. Uh, Molly Wood in the world of journalism, I, like she can't touch journalism without me just falling in love with it immediately. She's amazing at it. And um, that goes the same for Shannon Morse, a.k.a. Snubs, with all things tech, everything she touches as far as tech goes is just awesome. <laughs> and um, the only thing that I okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna preempt this a little bit. Shut up. I'm gonna preempt <laughs> this. Um, so she does a lot of things on Hack Five, and she does all this tech stuff, and and she she has a knack of breaking it down and making it easy to understand. And she's still yep. so far above my head. Um, we'll get to this <laughs> a little bit later, but uh, we have Shannon Morris with us. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Hi. What's up, man? <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, that was a that was a hell of an intro. Um, welcome, uh, Shannon. Good to have you here. Seriously, I feel I feel like <laughs> I always feel like such a normie. This is weird. <laughs> Y'all are <laughs> making me sound amazing, and I I don't consider myself amazing. <laughs> and and exactly, that's the amazing part of it. Um, so <laughs> yeah. those watching the video will notice that I am wearing my uh my 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 uniform. Or a brown shirt again this time. I actually meant to dress up and throw a ritual misery or a diamond club shirt on today. I'm going to get into my week by saying this traffic, this traffic in, in, in Alaska, like these people got to go. They got to <laughs> yeah. go. Like go somewhere else because they're in my I'm way. I'm surprised that you have traffic in Alaska. It's, well, there's only like 700 people that live there, right? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. We have, 300,000 in Anchorage alone and, and 300,000 oh, wow. in the entire rest of the state, but we have 300,000 in Anchorage. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's actually quite a concentration of, uh, of, of cold people. Yeah. And, it, and unfortunately all the jobs are in Anchorage where I work and all the nice houses with decent land are in Wasilla where I live. So thus I'm, <laughs> I'm not I'm, I like, I need to be the other direction, you know, but no. Um, so traffic was hell and you figured Alaska's Alaskans would be able to drive in some inclement weather and no, <laughs> that's not the case, but they're people. So automatically you're, you're wrong on that assumption. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, how's y'all's week been? It's been good. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> well, that's I think the biggest, yeah, mine's just been full of natural disasters and um, planning events. So it's been pretty, pretty eventful, I guess I could say, and stressful. So I grew up yeah, in so Southern California, and we had our fair share of wildfires and things like that. And it always seemed that, like, if the if if it was if it was burning west of us, we had like a westerly wind, like the not the mm -hmm. Santa Anas, but like whatever the opposite of Santa Anas are, would be blowing the smoke away from us. And then if it was more in the, in the, in the high desert area, it, you know, cause I grew up in Palmdale and Lancaster. So the Santa Anas would come in and just blow all the smoke the other way. Like we, we were in this like little anti-smoke bubble, even though <laughs> everything around us burned at one time or the other, not so much for you. Nope. It's pretty much everywhere. We can't get away from it. So if anybody doesn't know, I live in the San Francisco Bay area and right now you have all those Northern California fires the closest one to me is about 15 miles by air, not by land, but right. by air, As a uh, like straight over the bay. And there's a huge fire over there. That's uh, they finally got it to like 90 percent containment. The closest one to me. But most of them are at like three percent containment and they're all wildfires. So yeah. we're we have so much smoke 
around here. It smells like a campfire, like inside your house. You'll think that your something in your house is burning. It's been so crazy. And then outside the house, if you go outside, like there's big particles, there's ash on the ground, even though the closest fire is miles away. Right. And for me, like I'm worried about my you know, my lungs and everything. Cause just walking outside with the smoke, like there's huge particles in the air and like, you can see ash floating down and stuff like that. It's really scary. And then when the sun sets, it looks like an apocalypse because everything's <laughs> oh like lit God. up red. <laughs> I was watching the sunset this evening and it looked like a gigantic apocalyptic sun. I was like, cool. The entire world is on fire and it looks like there's a volcano behind this hill. It's scary. <sighs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Jeez. Um, are you are you close enough to see the glow from the bigger fires? No, I'm not close enough to see those, but it's it's so weird because as the sun is setting, it seems like the the sun is hitting the smoke to make a reflection that mm. turns everything orange around me. So it makes everything look like it's on fire. I don't think that's the reflections from the fire themselves. Yeah. I have friends that can see it from like their houses, <laughs> which is really scary. And some of them have been evacuated even, but luckily we're far enough away that we haven't seen any of that. Although one of my favorite wineries did go up in smoke, which really sucks. <laughs> it's man, it's so hit or miss in California. If you if you if you're not burning, you're sliding down hills. Right? right? Yeah. Either you got earthquakes, or you got like mudslides, <laughs> or maybe you'll get a tsunami or something. But yeah. no, today it's wildfires. <sighs> oh. uh, how about you, Kent? Um, I'm I'm guessing there's no wild wildfires in the sand desert or the 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 salt <laughs> desert that is around you. No, but it's it's interesting that you you talked about being able to see like you know particles floating in the smoke because um I did the like secondhand experience a little bit of that. I watched Stranger Things for the second like uh you know full binge session mm. and uh, so in the uh, as you know in the upside down there you can see the the particles floating in the air and all that. Um, yeah, it was amazing. I cannot wait for season two of Stranger Things because th this world that they created in eight short episodes is so rich and so dynamic. And I, I know if I watch this a third, fourth, fifth time, I'm going to catch stuff that I didn't see in my first two viewings because the second viewing, I probably caught twice as much mm. as I did on my oh, first. It's so just, good. See, I've it's only, so amazing. I've only ever watched it one time all the way through and you know, in uh, two sittings, you know, four and four. Um, but I, it's just amazing just the first time through. I, I'm waiting to watch it the second time through until right before it comes available because that's what's going to happen. I'm going to watch it right. and watch the new one. So, yeah. I'm yeah, probably so going to do the same exact thing. I, 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 there it's, it is one of those kind of shows where like you sit down and you're, you're going to catch things over and over. Like the more often you watch the movie, cause there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that the first season left out so many details. So they didn't close so much of the storyline that you think like, Oh, where, where's the second season going to go? Yeah. So you kind of have an idea of what's going to happen in the second season. Like maybe they'll talk more about like, you know, the, the company that, that is in that town and what they've been up to. And maybe they'll talk more about, um, uh, what was the girl's name? Uh, I only watched it 11. once too. Can you tell? 11. Yeah, 11. Yes. I was going to say eight and I was like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> um, I don't know why I thought uh, eight. <laughs> on that same point, I like the fact that there's so much of the character background and character development that just didn't happen. They, they gave you yeah. enough to, to understand and, and to get you into the mood of the show, but they didn't really fill in a whole lot of details and it leaves so much open that there's so, so many places they could go with it. They're, yeah. They did whatever they, the opposite of shoehorning themselves in. That's what they did because <laughs> they can go anywhere with yeah. it and it's, it, it still works. When does yeah. it, the second season come out? It's the end of this month, right? Yes, I, I want to say the twenty sixth or twenty eighth. Yeah, like that. yeah, last, I'm so excited. <laughs> the last <laughs> weekend of the month. So you know, we know it happens. You get the people that that are like us that are like, oh, I'm watching it like as soon as it happens, and then everyone else has a three day weekend like the next weekend or something like that for Veterans Day. So <laughs> they'll be able to catch yeah. up then. Yeah, um, exactly. So uh, this week, we, my uh, my son and I, we, we, we I don't want to say built a computer. We transplanted computers. Ooh. Um, he had a budget. I think I explained a little bit of this last week, but he had a budget and he wasn't going to be able to do it. He wanted with the with the budget. But with that same budget, I could take some of the stuff around the house and make it into a better computer for myself and give my hand my parts down to him. And we could we could walk away with two way better computers than what he could buy with just his 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 budget 
And I got to tell you, man, his computer's hauling ass. This computer that I'm on now, the so I oh and and uh, so my old my, my old computer was named Monster because it was just Aww. a monster. Um, then <laughs> then then we had Beast, um, but this one is a six core. It's a, a 6800, and it's going to be a 6850 tomorrow when that arrives. Um, so I had to think. Well, what what has more more cores, more thoughts, more heads? Oh, Hydra. <laughs> oh, this that, one's the Hydra. This one's nice. Hydra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to come up with a good name, but uh, but yeah, and and everything went flawless. Uh, he helped out with his computer and then bailed to do homework, like I kind of expected him to. And uh, I, all the problems came when I built my computer, of course. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you got to expect that. Um, but yeah, it's it's awesome, and it was really fun just getting back into just the raw. Hey, we're just slap some parts together and make something fast. So I need to build another computer coming up pretty soon because our editing rig at work is really, really slow. Mm. And I figured out <laughs> that the GPU is from 2007. Oh, God. I don't even know oh how it still God. runs. How does this thing still? I was like, who built this thing? Because I just started managing the studio like two years ago. Mm. So I was like, yeah, Darren, I think we should rebuild this computer because FYI, the GPU is from 07. He was just like, WTF. So yeah, we're going to build a new one. <laughs> now I just need to find the time to actually build another computer because I haven't done one in like two years. So I, I have found that um, actually building the computer is the easy part, like putting the parts in and getting the BIOS yeah, settings. Totally. And that, that's the, the, the stress and the anxiety and the, 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 the buying of the parts is the yep. hardest part to building a computer. Holy crap. Yeah, the building is by far the easiest. Yeah, part. building is like cathartic cathartic. Like you, you go through this this whole issue and you're stressed out and all the parts arrive and you're like and then all of a sudden there's this just this calm that washes over and you start slapping stuff together and you do that first boot and you're, you 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 hold your breath for that first boot, you know, and then then once you get that that single beep and the BIOS is up and you're like oh, everything is working. It's amazing. <laughs> the best part exactly exactly um yeah the, this uh this computer's got some g skill uh uh rpg or not rpg uh, rbg ram and mm. essentially they're little rainbows running around in my in my motherboard all the time and it's 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 awesome like i i don't do the whole building it up with a lot of lights and stuff like that but these were just they were like five dollars more than the ram i was gonna get anyway and i was like well let's do that and That's cool. It's pretty awesome. It's like my computer's just happy to see me every time I walk into my office. <laughs> Damn. Somebody's got to be I'm happy. I'm all to about see those it. colorful rainbows. So whenever <laughs> I built this editing rig, I know I don't need to get the lit up a RAM or the lit up motherboard, but mm. I'm probably going to do it anyway uh, just because I can. I After I ordered my parts, I, I ran into a, a YouTube video by Linus Tech Tips where they built like oh, yeah. RGB computers for like $300 or whatever. And after if I had seen that video before I uh, had bought my parts, it would have been a completely different computer because <laughs> I was really into the, oh, we got to light stuff up right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, Shannon, are you into Star Wars? Oh, am I? <laughs> so, so something really cool happened during oh, Monday Night I? Football. Maybe we should have opened with, are you a football fan? <laughs> Am I a Star Wars fan? Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was so dorky. Oh, I'm so that clipping that amazing. out. That was amazing. I am clipping that I, out. Somebody clip that out. That was <laughs> That was awesome. amazing. Um, My Chewbacca voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so during Monday Night Football, the, the new trailer for The Last Jedi dropped. And um, wow. Uh, I gotta say that trailer was awesome. Uh, Amos, did you did you get that sense? Did you enjoy it? So there are there are three types of trailers in my in in my my opinion. You've got the okay. teaser. The teaser trailer, by definition, doesn't give you any information. It might show you who the actors are, maybe some of the costumes, maybe a, a set designer or two, and right. that, that's it. It's, you know, if, if there's anything more than that, if there's any substance or or even really like lines in context it's not a teaser trailer anymore it's now an actual trailer and then you have the spoiler trailers and you have the non-spoiler trailers so there, there's your three types of trailers in my mind i hate spoiler trailers like if i'm watching a spoiler trailer if i finish the spoiler trailer i'm less likely to watch the movie than i am to buy a theater like that's just <laughs> that's that's my opinion on it right and the ultimate um non-spoiler trailer for me 
was Deadpool. Mm. Because everything that you saw in the trailer, well, pretty much everything you saw in the trailer happened within like the first three or five minutes of the of the actual movie while the credits were the initial credits were rolling it didn't give you anything but it, it of the story but it gave you enough to to fall in love with the character immediately and then some of the jokes that they used from later on in the movie ended up being b-roll ended up being cut scenes that they didn't even use you know so right. it was like it it was just gorgeous like you're sitting there thinking oh i know what he's gonna say here and that's not what he says at all so that's like my my the epitome of great trailers is that deadpool trailer and this one comes pretty close, especially when mm-hmm. you combine it with the first trailer. It doesn't give you anything in context, but you watch the two together, and there's enough clues where, man, your yeah. imagination can run really wild. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I felt like that, especially about the like last, what was it, ten seconds of this trailer when you see you see her, and then you see him. I don't want to give away too much. But then you see a hand, but she doesn't grab the hand. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, did that actually happen at the same time in the movie? Or we were these right. two different clips from two different scenes? I'm right. freaking out. The, the, and then yeah. there was the porg and I just yeah. I fell in love <laughs> immediately. <laughs> and the, yeah, uh, and the, one, the lighting one, is so similar I, in those two. Yeah, I know. Yeah, one thing so that amazing. I love about the, the at least the recent Star Wars trailers is that whenever they have a character moment, it's such a tight shot that you have no context. Right. Or, yeah. Or what is going on? So you can draw your own conclusions, and you can have all your nerd fights at the water cooler, and mm-hmm. it, it, yeah, they're so good. You know what this did though? It made me. There's several videos out there, like the entire uh, Star Wars canon explained in like 18 minutes videos, and I must have watched like five of them. It, they're <laughs> amazing. They're so good because I because again I've, I haven't seen Clone Wars or um, uh, Rebels. You know I haven't seen the the off the the non major film stuff. So. It's a you know the last thing I did was was read the Thrawn trilogy and then they got thrown out. But you know <laughs> so it's, <laughs> yeah. um it, it's right. just amazing and man I'm I'm uh, again I'm hyped up I'm psyched up I'm ready to watch some Star Wars. Uh, Kent I know you bought your tickets right? Man, oh dude, <laughs> my theater is garbage here. You know this. Uh, <laughs> I, the the thing is I I can't pre order tickets until like a week out, and then when you pre order the ticket. They don't let you pay for it up front. You have to, like, you're basically just reserving a ticket. So when you get to the theater, you still have to pay for it there. You, well, you have to wait in line at the, at the box office, pay for your thing there, and it's still not a reserved seat. You still have to hope you get a decent seat. So pre-ordering tickets here is, it's, it's a waste of time. Mm. I think I'm not pre-ordering for my town until I figure out where I'm going to be because around that time of year, I might be visiting family. Mm, So, and if I am, then I should hold off because my family really likes to go see the star Wars movies. Now these, these past few years, since we're all together during the holidays. So I might just end up having to wait, which is fine because they have a very, like, it's a small, like middle nowhere theater where they live. But that also means that nobody goes there during mm, Christmas time. Right. So yep, for us, yep. it's like we get the whole theater to ourselves. That's so awesome. I was oh, like, nice. I'm I'm going to wait. Hopefully, we'll be at home. But just in case, uh, just in case I'm still here, I might as well just hold off and not pre-order tickets yet. Mm. Mm. Yeah, gotcha. I, that makes sense. Logical. Yeah, I I haven't bought mine yet. Um, because I like to tempt fate. That's because I'm an idiot. That's why. That's that's really the only <laughs> excuse I have. <laughs> I'm excited for the Star Wars at Disneyland. I went to Disneyland like three or four weeks ago, and you could see a whole bunch of uh, uh, cranes building the new area because mm. they're going to open that up in 2018 or 2019. I don't remember which, but I've heard. I've heard a little little insider scoop here from an employee at Disneyland that they're going to have a cantina that offers alcohol. So it'll be the only place in Disneyland that so, you can get alcohol. So it'll be, uh, have you been to the Disneyland cantina that serves beer? No. <laughs> I, I, I can see that being a Diamond Club meetup just for that. Oh, no doubt. Go, oh, my man. God. I'm totally there. Go. I am so there. Um, God, hey, be- uh, see, speaking of sequels, um, Shannon, you did something that I also did last week. Uh, some Star Fox 2. Oh, yeah, I did. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I just got in my uh, Super Nintendo Classic 
on, I think it was Monday I received it. So all this week I've been like playing all the classic games like Super Mario, Super Mario Kart. Mm -hmm. I played some Kirby. I played some Star Fox. And then I played Star Fox 2. And it was the most magical moment of (laughs) my childhood, except, you know, 25 years later. It was incredible. (laughs) So... (laughs) It was uh, it was uh, twenty five years of pent up uh, 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 anxiety that you didn't know was there until it was there. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> so how so, does Star Fox Two stack up to the original? Um, I would say it's different. So with the first one, you know, you have terrible pixelated graphics, and you're able to do all the normal stock Star Fox stuff. You can do the barrel rolls. You can, you know, shoot. Uh, the cannons or shoot the the bombs. I don't remember what they're called. And then Star Fox 2, this one's a little different because it's not as linear of a story. Like you have a bunch of different options as far as where you can go in the storyline. And some of it takes place in outer space. So you're able to choose a, a direction that you want to go with your pilots and then go fight a battle in the middle of outer space. And since it's in outer space, that also means that you can do a whole 360 degree battle. So you can like turn up and down, you can do left and right, you can face all the way up and then follow these targets around you, which honestly for me was a little nauseating, especially (laughs) since it's so, so freaking pixelated, but it was awesome. It was really, really hard too at first because the controls were a little bit different than what I'm used to. So when I was trying to shoot them I was actually like (laughs) I don't think I was doing anything I was just like turning and I was I kept on hitting uh I think I had it set to x I was trying to hit x and nothing was happening and then I was like oh it's b fuck and I kept on dying (laughs) it was horrible but once I figured it out I I caught on pretty quickly and started killing all the things which was great (laughs) um so let me ask you this because I mentioned last week that the controller doesn't seem as responsive as my memory tells me as it was and it takes some getting used to on on just there's almost like button lag um maybe you know i wouldn't be surprised since it's all it's much more software packed now as opposed to being uh analog as opposed to you know now it's very digital digitized so i wouldn't be surprised if that was an issue i didn't notice it myself but maybe i just need to play more and pay more attention to that because for me i just I just thought that I was lacking. <laughs> I was so do like, the characters wow, talk really in Star Fox 2 the same way? Like the, with the um, like non-English? The, the Simlish? Oh, sounds. yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So whenever <laughs> I think of Star Fox, I always think of one of my first bosses. Uh, my first duty assignment in the Air Force when I was in Florida, one of our flight chiefs, like a, one of the like bosses of my work center, yeah. He mumbled and had such a thick accent. It was very difficult to understand what he said. And he would be one of the guys that at the beginning of the shift, he would stand up front during our like roll call and you know give us our announcements. This was pre-email and all that stuff. So all of our announcements had to come firsthand. Yeah. And uh, this guy was so difficult to understand. He sounded like the character. I don't remember which one it is from Star Fox, but he's like, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> and I... Me and my friend Joe, every day at roll call, we would crack up and make Star Fox jokes about this guy. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, man. That's, that's He's great. lucky that didn't happen when memes were a thing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, Ken, I had told you that, uh, that I was playing Star, uh, Super Mario World, and I couldn't remember any of the secret zones. Yeah. Like, I was playing through, and I was, I was doing the normal path, but I couldn't remember how to get to any of the branch out zones. Yeah. Just like traffic tonight when I talked to you, as soon as I got done talking to you, it like became clear and I went back through and, and I'm just clearing out all the all this the secret zones and everything else. And it's like, yes, why didn't I notice this before? Like this is it, th- <laughs> that part of my brain had been put away on a shelf somewhere and talking to you about it, like it made made my internal mind go back over there and brush it off and pull it out. And it's it's That's great. That's a total thing. Like one time I fell asleep and I had a dream about Batman Arkham Asylum, and then I woke up the next morning and I figured out how to get all the the Joker tokens, and I was just like, "That's how you do it!" Like I dreamed about it. I don't know. That happens sometimes. Like if you just step away from a video game for a while, 
you'll think of it. Your subconscious is like, oh, you need to finish this. Come on. This is how you do it. Yeah. And then it just helps you out a little bit. <laughs> it's like you're in inside cheat codes. Oh, yeah. So good. And, and dude, you got you. I know you still have an original SNES. I understand. I get it. Yeah. You, you, you need a SNES I was classic. Actually, I, I was going to try to pull a Tom Merritt and, and find my Super Mario World cartridge and be like, all the secrets are unlocked on this. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> That's I so great. <laughs> I failed at my Tom. <laughs> I was really sad the SNES Classic didn't come with the Lion King because that was a big game for me when I was a kid, and it took me a long time to beat. It's my my memory of the Lion King on SNES is Jamie playing the theme song while oh, yeah. she'd she'd play the theme song on a piano she couldn't see, and then she'd go over yeah. and pick up the controller and play she was the like game. Two years old. Yeah, she'd go over and play the game, and then a new song would start. And instead of like pausing it or anything else, she would just drop the controller, walk over to the piano, play the new song with one hand without seeing the keyboard, and yeah. then walk back over and start playing the game again. What? Yeah, musical prodigy. This little this little girl, our friend's little sister, she's a musical prodigy. And it, like I, I swear she was two, two or maybe three at the oldest. Yeah. And she could just hear a song one time, walk over to the keyboard and play it first time perfect. Yeah. That's crazy. Ridiculous. Nice. So yeah. yeah, that's that's my memory with Lion King. That and um wow. uh Oh, I can't. See, I, Moose, Moose, I don't uh, think I ever actually played the Lion King game, but Aladdin. I've got many hours. Oh long. yeah, Aladdin was legit. Mm. Uh, uh, Rafiki. <laughs> Every time you would die, Rafiki would come on, come on there and go, um, "Try again." And, and <laughs> if, you, if you if you chose to um, to not continue, he'd go, "You don't even know who you are." <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> oh, you know what else is great? Uh, Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. That's what's awesome. Hell yeah, man. If you enjoy what we do and you think there's value in it and you want to give us a little bit of value back, just head over to Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery and uh, show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck. There you go. <laughs> hey, um, you, you want to know what those dollars go to? It goes to Oktoberfest. That's what it goes to. So, uh, Kent, you got your Oktoberfest beer ready? Um, I don't have an Oktoberfest ready at the moment. Were we, uh, were we supposed to do an Oktoberfest? Just, just any new beer, man. You know, I don't do, I don't do special beers and stuff. Like I'm just, I'm just here to, here to have the drinks. Yeah. I've, I've actually, I do have a beer ready that I, I know that you wouldn't like. Oh, it's called Hop Revolver. <laughs> oh, that sounds very, like an IPA. IPA. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> definitely right. I would not like it. <laughs> But uh, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and pour these things and, and so uh, let to, people to bring Shannon up to up to speed. We're in in celebration of uh, of Oktoberfest. Kent actually is supposed to have two this week to make up for last <laughs> week when he didn't know it was a thing be- uh, until after I told him. Um, we, we're trying a new beer each each week. So uh, uh, go ahead and Kent and pour yours, and uh, I'll tell you about mine. Mine is uh, another Alaskan Pilot series. Uh, this one is Mocha Milk Stout, stout brewed with coffee. And you know how, how I like my milk stouts. Really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I cracked it open before the show. I have not tried it, have not tasted it, and uh, we're going to go ahead and do a pour here. Um, and, and, and this pour is dedicated to all of our patrons over at uh, rich, patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah, so I've got mine poured now. Uh, it's got a, a fairly decent head. It's a very golden, uh, lots, of, lots of sparkle going on here. I don't know if that, that comes across on, over Twitch, but... Uh, Man, I wish the aroma would come across Twitch though. This thing smells <laughs> delicious. Holy cow! It's like um, it's kind of like a mix of citrus and like a um, like Christmas trees almost. Ooh. Um, you can clearly see that you cannot cr- see anything clearly through my <laughs> my stout here. Um, that's 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 a good sign. Uh, really light head and uh, it it smells like Starbucks. It, that's what it smells like. It smells like 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 if Starbucks was a cantina that served beer, this would be the beer. <laughs> I wish Starbucks was a cantina that served beer. Oh my gosh, I'd be there every day. Hey, I have a beer. At least it's not Irish on coffee. me, but I have a new favorite Uh-oh. from a local brewery. It's called Armistice Brewery. It's in the East Bay, uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, a brother and sister 
they take care of all the brewing and everything locally, which is really cool because they always change it up and they kind of do experiments and, you know, try different brews. Um, my recent one that I really like is called Saison de Table, and it's a table strength Saison, and it's only 5% alcohol or the ABV content. And, uh, but it's kind of like a Hefe, like a Hefeweizen mm. and it, it's really, really refreshing and it leaves, according to them, it's an aftertaste of banana, clove, black pepper, and spices. Um, oh, wow. for me, I think it's pretty similar to that. You can definitely taste the clove and I really, really like that. Mm. Um, I just love how, how light it is and how it's not like super, super bitter or anything like that. So it's a really good choice if you like lighter beers and you're in the Bay Area. So that's Armistice Brewery. If you're ever there, check it out. It's really good, that, good shit. That actually sounds awesome. delicious. Yeah, it it's really so does. good. And I, I got to say, this, uh, this does taste like coffee. Like it's, it's pretty good. It's even, got, it's awesome. even got a coffee aftertaste. Like it just, I need some creamer. Um. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my God. Um, no, it's, it's funny when you were talking about Oktoberfest beers, Amos, uh, Media King 909 in Twitch chat said, don't you mean Rocktoberfest? <laughs> <laughs> Look, we don't get any, uh, any, oh, oh man, I'm so excited. Like I have not stopped listening to, uh, 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 uh now I can't remember the jukebox. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You're, what, um, what is it? I don't know. You're the one that Post, follows this modern jukebox. <laughs> Look, I'm not the one that's supposed to remember, though. Postmodern Jukebox, man. I have not stopped <laughs> listening to it. I'm so excited. Two weeks, we get to go see him live, and it's going to be amazing. That's awesome. So, um, Hey, uh, there's there's other stuff we're supposed to be doing today. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. So, like, the, like, a game, perhaps? Um, like, like, maybe... I wonder, this... if Jay can, I wonder if Jay can set this up for Shannon. Um, hey, Jay, you got a little something for us? You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for Hot Takes on the Ritual Misery Podcast. I like the fact that she was actually listening to it, trying to decipher as she went along, and it kept surprising her. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, Shannon. So the way this game is played is very simple. You have about a minute, and you get to do a lot of talking. Oh, boy. Okay. You ready? Okay. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to give you a topic, and then you are going to say, you. it's up to you. You can either say one word, you can rant for as long as I let you. Um, it, it's really up to you. Say what you want about the topic. And then okay. you're going to hear a, re a record scratch. Like, uh, okay. Hopefully you can hear that. Does yeah, that come through? That. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you're going to hear a record scratch, and that's your cue to stop and get your next topic. And we're going to go for about a minute. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, Shannon. Getting drunk at the hack house, am I right? Oh, man, you are so right. Can I tell you a story about one of our previous sponsors? So one time we had a beer sponsor and they were a really, really terrible beer. So they sent us a whole bunch of bottles of this beer. And we decided because we didn't like it and we didn't want to make really, really funny faces on camera, uh, we poured it out and then we put our favorite beer inside of it. And then we did the sponsorship for the beer. And I felt really bad about it, but we got really drunk on set, and they really appreciated it. It was good times. <sighs> UPS lying about delivery attempts, am I right? Oh, my gosh. You must read my Twitter. <laughs> Let's just talk about this real K, okay? I'm going to give you a hot take, okay? So, needless to say, I run an online business where I sell stuff, and we work with UPS, so whenever something happens with UPS, I can pretty much call them out whenever they're lying about delivering. Mm -hmm. They should not mess with us. <laughs> Gaslighting, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't gaslight me. <laughs> <laughs> open Wi-Fi at DEF CON, am I right? Oh, oh open Wi-Fi. <laughs> All the open Wi-Fi's. We actually really appreciate it when there's open Wi-Fi because it helps us sell our products. <laughs> <laughs> the Ritual Misery podcast, am I right? Oh, man, those two weird guys. Yeah, I've heard about them. They're uh, One of them's in Alaska, and apparently he just doesn't know how to drive. And then there's the other guy, and he just he's in the middle of a desert. I don't know. I, I'm not sure about them, but apparently they really like beer, and 
uh, they have a pretty funny show from the ones that I've listened to. There you go. I, I I'd say you pretty much nailed it. That's uh, I'd, I'd call that an A plus. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks for playing along, Shannon. Very good. I like how you made a lot of those like snubs friendly. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm not going to disclose the sources that we use. Uh, we, we have, <laughs> we have lots of sources. Um, and, and, but I will, I will disclose one, uh, just because it's, it's there. And I wanted to point it out. Um, getting drunk at the hack house is actually your first tweet. What? Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Yeah. The, I, oh I, man. Yeah, you know, uh, we, wow. we our our, uh, our our super sleuths went through uh, years and years of data to find that for you. So, whoa, I've tweeted like thousands of times. That's shoot. I thought my first tweet was like while I was in college. I guess not. Mm. I guess I was getting drunk at the hack house. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great time to create a Twitter account. <laughs> and it hasn't been the same since. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Um, okay, so oh, uh, so we didn't invite you here just to sit here and talk about our weeks and 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 uh, and make jokes and and put you on the spot for for sixty or or sixty seconds or five minutes, however that long that was. <laughs> oh, see, I just burped for you. See, there you go. See, you nice. were afraid of burping on on, on camera earlier, and uh, I just took care of that. <laughs> it's like breaking Trump, like right? Um, we 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 wanted to have you on because one, you're 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 into tech. Which we're into tech. Two, your self uh can't can you can you word for me? Oh uh, uh, yeah, words are hard. <laughs> self proclaimed geek. Um, you're also, and uh, I'm I'm sure you don't mind me saying this, but some people get really really irritated. Um, uh, an outward atheist. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're a lady. Like yeah, you know, I think so. You, Hold on. Yeah, yeah okay, right? I am. <laughs> well. <laughs> I have a lot of daughters and I really look forward, look, look up to people in your position who, as we were talking last weekend, um, you're not just, you don't just happen to be a lady in tech that's out in front and doing stuff and you're being cool. Like you own it. You really yeah, totally. own it. You're like, yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm a chick. I'm into this, 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 and this. And oh, by the way, if you don't like it, you don't exist. Well, there's yeah. such an unconscious bias about uh, women who are in, in tech or in, into video games or just into like STEMA in general, STEM plus arts in general. So so you always see like whenever I go to a shopping center, for example, and I'm shopping for computer parts at Fry's Electronics or something, I've I've had a, a, a customer or an employee at that store come up to me and just be like, who? who's buying this? Are you buying this? And I was just like, what the, what, why, why is that even a question? What's wrong with me buying this? I realize that I get manicures, but so what? Like I can still build a computer with manicure. In fact, it's better with nails because then you can get screwing all the little bits <laughs> easier. You can plug things in with your nails. So yeah, I've always been very outspoken about it and just been like, you know, that, that, bias that people have naturally just because of Hollywood and because of society, like thinking that women can't do the things that, you know, a lot of us have been doing, like me and my friends, like I'm trying to change it one step at a time. I'm trying to change that idea that that society has about women. And I don't know, I, I hope that it's working. I don't know if it is, but I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell for, for the few people that watch us that don't know much about you and uh, what you've done in the world of tech. Uh, can, can you give us like just kind of a, a quick like thirty or sixty second synopsis of like where you began in? Um, you no, know, she, uh, she pod, podcasting, broadcasting. She can't. Uh, what? There's no way to summarize all the stuff she's done in thirty to sixty <laughs> seconds. Like just I, the highlights. I give us the, uh, I, I, I tried writing up like a mini CV for her to to <laughs> introduce her, practice. and it was like you're. Your about me page of the things that you've done is like 15 scrolls long. It's oh yeah, yeah. We don't have that much time. Uh, but but no, if you could give us like the the, the short short version of the highlights, uh, let us know where like where you've been and what you've done. So I I grew up around computers and I always had this fascination with um, being on on a t- on a stage. So I joined theater when I was in school, and after college. I was trying to figure out a way to put my 
my obsessions together into a career path. And I just so happened to run across the Hack 5 uh, crew. And I thought that that was the perfect thing for me because it, it took my love of building computers and being around technology and like, you know, taking things apart and putting them together again. And my love of theater where I was entertaining people and I was, you know, making them feel and, you know, having this passion that I was able to share with people and, uh, you know, just being able to, to get on a stage and talk about something that I loved. Uh, so podcasting was able to mold those two things together. And then I ended up starting, starting hack five in 2008. And since then I've done shows for Sony and for twit and for a bunch of other different companies. Uh, um, Discovery Digital Networks is one of them. I was on Tech Thing for a long time, and I've started doing my own shows now. So now I have a personal YouTube channel, and I have Tech... Uh, I almost said Tech... tech techzilla. <laughs> now I have Tech Thing and Hack5, and I've been slowly curating like a slew of video uh, over the course of almost 10 years. And it's... I'm at that point where like, this is the dream job that I always wanted. And I didn't realize it until I was doing it because it didn't exist when I was younger. Mm. So I'm just thankful that I'm able to do this now. And I'm gracious towards the people that watch it because I still feel like I'm, I'm not good, <laughs> but it <laughs> seems like people enjoy it. So I just keep on doing it. And I'm like, whatever, if you don't like it, you don't have to watch. That's cool. <laughs> but luckily people are enjoying it. So I guess, I guess it's just the fact that I'm, I don't know, I don't fake people out when I'm on camera. I don't pretend to be somebody that I'm not. So I just keep on doing what I'm doing and people enjoy it. So hopefully they keep on liking it. <laughs> Fitzchiv29 in the Twitch chat he, he just points went off out in chat. that you That's also made the pineapple. I did not make the pineapple. I helped market it and I helped so sell it and I helped solder it. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were counts. support staff for the pineapple. Yeah, I, I think it. it counts. I would. Yeah, um, I was support staff for the pineapple. I was like back in the day, I was flashing them and then selling them, and then I was the I was the one person that would solder all of the battery packs that we would sell with the pineapples. So I got really, really good at soldering and really good at like flashing software. <laughs> <laughs> right on. And now you got a guy, right? You got a guy that does all the soldering. I know. We, we... Yeah, you know, we got a guy. <laughs> no, we ended up. Uh, I ended up hiring our first uh, hack shop employee. Um, several years ago, it was when I got a job at Twit and I wanted to start doing a lot more on camera work and production type stuff. So I wanted to be like a producer and all that stuff, as well as more hosting. And uh, Darren and I decided to hire somebody. So she came in and I trained her up and I love training people. It's so much fun. I love educating and, you know, teaching what I know. So it's super, super cool. And uh, she is amazing. She's still with us to this day. So yeah, she took over and she loves what she does too. So now she's managing the hack shop and she has an employee. So it's kind of grown from there. We're still a really small company. Um, we only have like six people or so at hack five, but you know, through that, I've been able to curate a lot more work for myself just from, you know, studio work and on camera stuff and even photography. And, and covering for Darren for months at a time while he's off traveling the uh -huh. world. Yep, <laughs> because somebody chose not to pre-record his segments. Uh huh. <laughs> so my, yeah, my not to call out Darren or anything. Yeah, my my yeah. introduction to Darren was actually um, when he was doing the Hack Across America, where he was okay. he was essentially I I I don't want to pay for a hotel. I don't want to stay in a tent. I'm going to couch surf my way from what New York or whatever down to California because that's where we're going to build the new hack warehouse and this and that. And I was like, ballsy. Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hello, cool. ballsy. Um, I, I went to offer my services, but uh, I was actually leaving for. I was either leaving for Korea or, I think I was leaving for Korea at the time. Um, but I, I didn't have a stable place for him. I couldn't be like, hey man, in six months when you decide to finally pull the damn trigger, I'll be <laughs> <You're> here. <right. laughs> uh, <laughs> even though I'm way out of the that way. That military life, yo. Uh, you're not kidding, right? Um, so. <laughs> I, I mentioned a little bit earlier that you like the shows that you do, they're, they're just like, I understand what you're talking about. And now I'm, yeah. a, I'm a tech fiend myself. I love, I love getting to the nitty gritty. I'm not that good with, with, uh, with Unix or, or Linux or whichever Nix you want to do. Um, but I love tinkering around with it and, and learning it and things like that. 
but half the stuff you do is just just above my threshold. And then you came out with tech tips, and you're like, yeah. hey, here's a way to get people into it. Because I kept, uh, I'd see you on DTNS, and I'd chat in there, like, hey, uh, what about those of us that are just a hair behind the curve? Um, and finally, tech tips come out. And now that I know about it, I haven't had a chance to watch it because I'm waiting to have to watch it with my son so we could like watch it together. And oh, like, cool. he's too busy playing Minecraft and, and CSGO <laughs> and whatever else. So I'm just going to have to do it myself. But it's amazing that, that you filled in that gap, too, because now everything that you want to learn about tech, well, about hacking and, and how hardware works and, and how firmware works and everything else, it's all there on Hack5. With, yeah, totally. With that That's like exactly that came out of frustration, like my own personal frustration, because a lot of the hacker tutorials that you find online, they completely skip the beginner steps. And I was a beginner, obviously, everybody starts somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I was going online trying to find these tutorials so that I could build segments on top of them. And I was getting hella frustrated because nobody wrote down this information for me. And then I felt so stupid going online and asking questions to forums. And they would just be like, uh, RTFM, don't you know man pages? And I'd just be like, nobody has a tutorial on man pages. So of course not. But <laughs> yeah. so eventually I was like, you know what? We need to do something to get more people interested in this because right now the people that are writing these tutorials, not everybody, there were some very welcoming people, but a lot of the tutorials that I did find, like people would just be like RTFM and just leave it at that. And I just be like, well, that's not the way to make friends. So I'm going to make friends. And then I started <laughs> hack tips so that yeah. I can make friends on the internet with all these cool people and they will feel like they can ask me questions. Because I always feel like, you know, no question is stupid because everybody starts somewhere. And mm. if you don't have somebody to ask that question of, then you're going to get frustrated and never want to get into this kind of information. You're never going to want to be an infosec yeah. professional, whatever it might be. So I think that's, yeah, that's the barrier. The barrier to entry for a lot of people is just their their ignorance on a thing and the unwillingness of other people to explain it to them. Well, yeah, there, there's, totally. a, uh, because, there's a gap. But, there's like a, because uh, the, the, you got the knowledge floor, right? The minimum knowledge that you need to, to be able to to hack things and to, to progress along the hack five uh, lesson plan, right? You have to have a certain, yeah. a certain bare minimum knowledge. And then you have underneath that, like a, a few levels below that, you have the basic knowledge that you'll get from stuff you should know. And, and you know, these other tech, or uh, uh, I'd say tech programs, but these other podcasts, these other YouTubers, they give you the the basics, like here's the building blocks, and then you got hack five, which you need to be on at least at least the second floor, but yeah. nobody tells you how to turn those building blocks into the stairs to get you to the second floor, and that's where tech tips comes in, and it's 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 awesome. Thank yeah. you, I really appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I have a great story that kind of goes along with that line. I went to DefCon one year, and we're we're always vending, we're always selling Wi-Fi pineapples and stuff, and this girl came up to me and at one of the conventions, and she was just like. Uh, I don't know anything about hacking and I'm really nervous. And do you think I should buy one of these? And she like holds up a Wi-Fi pineapple. And I was just like, actually, no. And then I left the booth with her and I took her over to the bookstore that was at DEF CON. And I was like, you should read this book. And I, I showed her the book and I was like, you should buy this before you buy any of our products. Like come back later when you're ready for that. Like I didn't, I was like, don't give me your money if you're not if you don't feel like you're prepared, I want, I want you to understand the theory behind the product before you actually buy something. And yeah. then she came back to us the next year and she bought a Wi-Fi pineapple at the convention and she thanked me for not like pushing it on her. And that's, that's what I wish somebody did for me when I was a beginner, because nobody really told me like, Hey, you should read this book or anything like that. So I'm, I am trying to fill that gap and introduce people to the, the concepts and theory before they get into like the really legit stuff. I can tell you your next mini series for your YouTube, your YouTube channel is yeah. identifying the books that actually take you from zero to the second floor, because there's so many books that. that are 40, $45 book. Will give you all those building blocks again, but they won't take you to that next level. They won't tell you how, like, they won't train you or teach you how to actually get there. Like, get started. It's like, oh, here's all this knowledge. Now you, now you're ready. No, you're not. You know, yeah. and it's, or, or it's, now you know the vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Book, <laughs> the books are just like the 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 people online. It, there's that gap, and it, yeah, the few books that transcend that gap are amazing, but they're so hard to find. And that's a forty five dollar mistake if you're buying it off the shelf. Mm -hmm. 
That's very true. Yeah, I, I highly recommend Humble Bundles. Like if you ever see a really good one for a topic that you're interested in, just grab one of those because you can get really good books at really steep discounts. And then you can just learn your life away with all this amazing knowledge. So they're well, well worth the price. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can't you get anything else before we, uh, we move on with the, the, the fun times? Yeah. So I, I actually have, I do have a question. So, uh, we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, your, I guess, outspokenness about being a lady in tech, um, yeah. and, you know, uh, deal with it or, or get the F out. Um, uh, has anyone inspired you? Are, are there women in tech that you look up to that you can point to saying that like, yes, like she inspired me. She is, is mm. part of the reason that I am where I am. This is why you keep Ken around. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, y'all know Veronica Belmont. <laughs> She yeah, was one yes. of my really big uh, influences whenever I got into podcasting. And um, I was listening to her back on Buzz Out Loud days. And I was like, she's cool. I like her. She's like really friendly and funny. And like she she's very to the point. Like she knows what she's talking about. And she makes a point on the show. She doesn't like beat around the bush with anything. And I really like that because I'm a logical thinker. And I don't like beat around the bush with people at all. So I really liked her, really liked Molly Wood back in the day. And they were kind of my first introduction to women uh, doing podcasts, especially since it was fairly, fairly new when I was starting. Since mm. then, I've also grown to learn a lot about other women that are working in InfoSec, like hackers and information security professionals. Uh, one of them is this lady named Tara Wheeler, who wrote, literally wrote the book called Women in Tech. And she interviews oh, wow. all these amazing professional women who have gone so far in their careers. And I just, I'm floored by not only the work that she's done to really get women into uh, information security, but also the work that she's done professionally, like, you know, speaking at conventions about different hacks that she's done and different uh, security topics. So she's really, really amazing. Uh, her and Georgia Weedman who wrote also wrote a book. All of mine just happen to be authors. How weird. <laughs> I'm such a bookworm. <laughs> George Weedman wrote a great book that's in like a introduction to information security. And she did an excellent book. And she's we interviewed her on the show, which was my first introduction to her. And she's also a hacker. And they're they're the kind of people, the kind of women who are changing the ideas that people have when they picture hackers. Like both of them are these amazing ladies who are doing really, really great work. And now my perception, whenever I think of the word hacker is them as opposed to like uh, somebody in a black hoodie, like hiding their face over a keyboard, which is what Hollywood thinks it is. Or so right. I, or, or I Angela love Julie. these women and I'm so happy that I've been able to like talk to them in person and kind of just get with them and be able to ask them personal questions. That's awesome. Very cool. That my God, that was an amazing answer. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. We're, we're, we we ain't got no time for half ass guests on this show. All right, we we, we want the ones that the good answers that that make us go. Hell oh yeah. shit, she's answering questions I thought I asked. <laughs> oh damn. Um, uh, Amos, so you and I are both from Indiana. Like yeah. you live in Alaska right now. Mm -hmm. I live in New Mexico right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived in Indiana too. <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry, I missed that. She said she lived. I in lived Indiana. in Indiana too. Where, where at? <laughs> Where where at in Indiana? Oh, where at? Um, I don't remember the name of the town. It was near Indianapolis, but it was when my dad was in the military. So wherever the oh, military right. is. There. Yeah. So well, another person that that used to live near Indianapolis was David Letterman. Mm. Mm. And Amos, you you watched something this week that uh, that you wanted to talk about that's uh, concerning David Letterman. Well, so. David Letterman's one of those guys that he had a career. He he left, uh, you know, he, he left comedy for a while. He's been kind of behind the scenes doing some things and a little bit of controversy here and there. But he's he's maintained fairly low key. And he pops up at the dedication ceremony for Peyton Manning's statue for the Colts over the weekend, mm. and he gives a about a five minute little monologue, and it was just so good to watch David Letterman do David Letterman like. It wasn't, yes. he wasn't acting. He wasn't like putting on, it, it, he was just, he was standing in front of a crowd cracking jokes on himself and everyone around him. 
and it was just it was funny to include Peyton, yeah, especially Peyton. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, you know, he even even got in on uh, on Eli Manning. Uh, he said, uh, you know, Peyton Manning may be retired, but Eli Manning and Peyton Manning are going to have have the same number of wins so far this season. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was just good to, to, I ran across that, uh, browsing the old space book and it was funny and I love it anytime, so especially someone from Indiana and Indiana alumni I can, can just come back home and, and visit Indiana again and, and have just a, it, it was awesome. It was five minutes of, of laughing my butt off. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I have two comments on that. No, number one. Yes. David Letterman is the man. I love Dave he needs to come back and do something else, like put himself back in the mainstream, which I think he's got a deal with somebody where he's going to do some sort of a talk show thing. Mm. Uh, I hope that goes through. I'm really looking forward to that. Number two, I agree with everything you just said about, you know, uh, being, uh, you know, from Indiana and like appreciating Indiana because you and I growing up there, we could not wait to leave Indiana. Right. But there's something about it as seldom as we go back to Indiana. I was there, what, about a month ago, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, I spent a week there. And, dude, there's something about it. There's Like, Indiana has this draw. Like, when you're like, oh, I got to go back to Indiana, you're like, oh, I don't want to go back to Indiana. But as soon as you get there, it's like, <laughs> oh, when, man. When we were young, we called, we called it Derry, Indiana, our little town of Oxford, Indiana. We called it Derry, Indiana, after the Stephen King town of Derry, Maine. It yeah. tends to draw everyone back to it. Uh, yes, um, that's so very true. Man. But yeah, there, there's just there's there's something, and maybe I mean maybe everybody has this for their place. I don't know, but um, I didn't grow up most of the time in Indiana. Most of my my childhood was in California. But there's something really comforting about being in Indiana. It's just it's awkward. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, so, all right, man. We didn't announce this at the top of the show. We didn't. Uh, I think we talked about it a little bit last week. Yeah. Uh, but this is our three-year anniversary of the Ritual Misery podcast. What? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah so, Amos, Ritual, Ritual uh, cheers birthday. to you. Cheers to our cheers. patrons. Cheers to our audience. <laughs> and cheers to Shannon uh, for being our three-year anniversary oh, guest. <laughs> I was worried I was giving you guys, like, Phone numbers personal or information on this sticker, but I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, uh, happy birthday, Richard Misery. Here's Shannon's number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, three years ago today, uh, we recorded our first semi-scripted episode. It was actually beta two. Patrons can find it in the in the in the, the uh treasure box. Um yes. but that was three years three years ago today. And of course that is the last beta that did not get published as part of the normal stream. Yeah. So. Uh, man, it's been fun, dude. Like, I has it been three years already? That that blows my mind because it seems like just I don't know. A couple months ago, you were like, "Hey, man, uh, this podcast thing, like, you want to give it a shot?" <laughs> that seems like it's been a year ago, man. It was so recent. Yeah, really, really cool. cool, man. I I'm real proud of the progress we've made. I love, 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 love our audience. Uh, whether you listen to us just uh, you know the audio podcast or you're part of our live audience or any other iteration of our show uh, man we love you guys and appreciate you guys so much uh, one of the things that that Amos and I both really really enjoy about doing this podcast thing is just the audience interaction whether it's during the show live or the feedback that we get uh, it's it's so much fun and it's so it just makes everything worth it when we when we get, uh, you know, that, that interaction, just that feedback. Yep. And, um, uh, so spirit of that, <laughs> Davis, do you want to, you want to remind our audience what we had or what we asked them to do, uh, several weeks ago. So we know that everybody looks on iTunes. If they're going to look on iTunes, they, they look there, they see how many stars the podcast has and they immediately judge it, what, what, what it's worth. And, and they move on with life. If, if it didn't have five stars and they don't care if it's got, four and a half or lower they, they don't want to hear that they just want to see the five stars and nobody yeah. actually reads the reviews because well nobody's got time for that that's why they have the stars if they if they wanted you to read they wouldn't have a star rating for you to for you to use <laughs> right so we've been asking for for a while now for five star shitty reviews give us five stars chop up the show however you want it knock us down bag on us or just say how how awesome the show is in a really offhanded way 
We've been asking, and we've got several that we wanted wanted to read tonight. Uh, real quick, this show is going to be long. And Shannon, I'm sorry if you had to somewhere to go. Uh, this is just it's, okay. it's been too awesome to stop. Um, <laughs> and uh, we we've got several here. And uh, uh, you want to take the first one, or or or, or how you want to do this? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and start it off. Uh, all, all right. So we we asked for for five star shitty reviews. So the, so I got in there and I was like, all right, let me look at the recent reviews. So here's the first one I grabbed. Uh, it starts out a miserably good time. I was like, all right, this is going to be a super shitty review. All right, five stars. Alex CPDS says, Kent and Anthony have a great dynamic going that makes the show so much fun. It's almost like a Batman and Robin thing. But, well, they both take the lead at times, so maybe Batman and Batman? You know what I mean. They are thoroughly entertaining, and the guests are equally so. Especially love the Tay Allen episode. She should come back often. Then I was like, what? wait a minute. That wasn't a shitty review. That was actually kind of flattering. <laughs> um, no, but we we love those too. Uh, the important part was the five stars, of course. Um, but yes, Alex CPDS, thank you for that review. Um, that's that's really good. We we ask for shitty reviews, but we absolutely love hearing the good stuff too. Mm. Uh, but we do have some that are a bit shittier. Amos, do you want to? Yeah. Um, and now, now you, some of you might know who this is. I don't know if maybe you can decipher uh, amongst yourselves, chat room, who who wrote this one. But uh, Crunchzilla says Kenton Ethan Kane, if that's even his real name, are probably the two most annoying people I've ever heard. But ripping into them is encouraged. So that makes me feel better about myself, or 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 something. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I, I don't think that name is super cleverly disguised. Uh, uh, Long time listeners will know very yeah. much who that is. Uh, all right, so I'll read the next one. Uh, this one is, uh, I think people will recognize this name as well. Uh, the subject is meh, and it's from <laughs> Tigasa. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's, uh, that's really a resounding. Uh... <laughs> meh. So he goes, on, he goes on to say, I was barely able to listen through one episode. Listening while eating dinner was a bad choice. <laughs> I did manage to hold down my delicious steak dinner, though, so that's a plus. <laughs> And you want to hit up the last one we got it got here. Okay, up. so there's one person we can always always count on to to give us the goods. He's he's never failed us, and he wrote us a nice little uh, five star shitty review. He's in the chat actually. Is, is he's he? in the Twitch chat, or at least he was earlier. I haven't heard him speak up, but yeah. uh, go, go ahead and uh, say who it is um, and uh, go ahead and read. It. This is entitled "Get Your Shit Together" by Cabo Diamonds. Wow, here I was thinking I'm about to listen to a top not top of the line podcast and nope. Just two guys hanging out talking garbage. I mean, honestly, who wants to listen to all things geek? Who wants to listen to two guys to, who wants to listen to guys talking about TED Talks? Who wants to watch two guys playing BS games with their guests? Not me, I can tell you that. Seriously, you upload one video to another site that doesn't jive with what's on iTunes. You would think you guys are still in beta with the show that you put on. Good luck getting more than your moms to view this podcast. <laughs> um, and just so you know, our moms don't listen to this podcast. My mom yeah. doesn't watch my podcast either. <laughs> yeah, accurate. accurate. I'm actually curious how many podcasters' moms actually listen to their show. Or I watch don't know show. that I want to know. It might, it might, it might <laughs> crash the veal down a little bit on a couple of my favorite shows. <laughs> Oh my god! My mom will only like watch even... it if she's on it, so she only watches my vlogs. <laughs> <laughs> even uh, so, Justin Robert Young, he's always talking glowingly about his mother. Uh, it's funny that I said glowingly. Uh, Glowbug Young, uh, he he's ta <laughs> he talks you know mad awesomeness about Gloria, and uh, we interviewed her about. Oh my gosh, it's been a, a while ago now. Eight months or and, so. Uh, yeah, she doesn't even watch her son's <laughs> shows. So. <laughs> Yeah, good luck getting uh, our moms to. No to kidding, watch it. especially yours. Um, yes, but yeah, my yeah, my mom, my mom is no longer amongst us, so that would be a real feat. Zero chance, uh, zero chance. Um, oh man, but but seriously, uh, we we appreciate the the shitty reviews, especially the five stars. Um, keep those coming. We uh, we said that we were going to read them on the three year uh, anniversary show, which we did. Uh, but we will continue to read them as we get them. I think that we're going to make that kind of like a regular segment mm. uh, toward the end. We'll we'll try to read one a week. Uh, so keep those things coming. They're absolutely awesome, and thank you so much for those. Now the next thing I want to talk about, I'm going to turn turn it back to Shannon here. 
Um, you went through something that I thought was absolutely just one of the coolest things ever because I remember scanning in old photos from when I was a little kid and everything else. You took that one step further and you actually got some really great results from it. I did. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about this. So this is like my newsy thing for the week just because I'm so freaking excited about it. Um, like nine months ago or so I sent this company in the middle of Minnesota, uh, huge box of negatives that my mom had collected since I was born. So there were a good 3000 negatives in there and that's not even oh, half wow. of what she has at home. But I was like, okay, you have these in your house. You're the only person that has these copies. These are the only copies and you still have the negatives. It's like, there's gotta be scanning services available nowadays. Cause I'm not going to have the time to do it myself. So I looked online and I found this company that was recommended recommended by Wirecutter, I think it was. And I sent them a message and I was like, hey, uh, how long would it take to do like 3,000 negatives? <laughs> and they were just like, oh, probably four months. And I was like, okay. So I sent them the negatives. <laughs> it took nine months. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, a little bit more time than I thought it would take. But I just got them back uh, yesterday, so I broke into the box and I sent them a hard drive to stick all the JPEGs on. So I got the hard drive back, and they sent me TIFFs and JPEGs. So I'm I'm just interested in the JPEGs to be honest. But I I went through them, and all the pictures are like four thousand plus pixels each. It's crazy, crazy sizes. Like you could print them, print quality for like really oh, wow. big. Yeah, like I could get a poster printed of some of these. And they're 35 millimeter negatives that they scanned, but they look like smartphone or they look like really nice, uh, like cyber shot camera or point and shoot yeah. camera, mm -hmm. like that kind of quality. They came out looking excellent. Like you can see the detail of like, you know, when I was a baby, you could see like the details of my eyelashes and stuff like that. And you could see like the details of my eyes, like so crazy. Mm. Of course, it all depends on like how well the pictures have uh, been taken care of. So right. like if the negatives have some damage, you'll see that in the scans too. But for some of the pictures that like the negatives that she took really good care of my mom throughout these years, because some of them are 32 years old at this point, they look amazing. So she, they had, look incredible. she had pictures of you before you were born? <laughs> she had, well, there were some pictures in there from like months before I was born. <laughs> and yes, there were some in there before I was born, technically, because mm. she got some pictures like of her at the hospital and stuff like that. So they were like, I was just floored it, by how well they came out. And if you don't mind I'm me asking, uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a scale of one to five, uh, how expensive was it? Oh, like four. <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, wow. Were, yeah. Yeah, they were really expensive. Well, if you're if you're doing very small amount of negatives, then it won't cost that much. But I had three thousand negatives, right. and they were like seventy five cents or something like that per negative. I think it was. Mm. Oh wait, I have the invoice. It was Good yeah, Lord. it was seventy five cents per negative. Mm. So I spent I spent a lot of money. <laughs> just, but was it worth it? it? Yes, See? absolutely. There you go. That's I mean, think about it. Like if my mom's house burnt down. I wouldn't have all those memories anymore. Mm -hmm. Like she's the only person that had those copies. So now I have a digital copy. So I already uploaded it to my, my encrypted cloud service and I'm going to, I'm getting flash drives so I can send my brothers, my sister and uh, my mom copies. So no matter what happens, like as long as the globe doesn't blow up, which I mean, given how 2017 has been going, it might, but <laughs> As long oh, as man. one of us survives, then our pictures will survive too. Mm. So hopefully we continue surviving for a while. But yeah, now we have multiple copies and they look amazing. And I can awesome. upload them and stuff. Like, that's so weird. It's so weird being able to upload photos of me when I was a like two-year-old kid. It's kind of cool. I'm like, oh, this yeah. picture is 30 years old, but it looks like it's from a, from a digital camera. That's awesome. That is way so awesome. Weird. Yeah, that's um, pretty great. So, uh, I love so, that. so last item for the evening before we get into, uh, winding things down, um, we've been running a contest on who names the most episodes on this show. <laughs> yes. And so far, uh, Jotmon has a handy lead, which maybe there's a conspiracy there because he's also the one, one that keeps track on the, the Diamond Club <laughs> wiki page. Uh, yeah, yeah. so there, there might be a little bit of a skew there, but 
you know, we're, we're going to go ahead and settle that down. And from now, what is it, 10 weeks? Did, did 10 we weeks, count? yes. 10 we weeks? are going okay. 10 weeks for the contest. Oh, so 10 weeks, we're, we're, Starting doing tonight. A, we're doing a playoff of who has the most titles uh, suggested and won. Um, and the, your current standings, the current standings as of now, will be used as... <laughs> this chip just got, uh, just got blocked by Nightbot. Um, <laughs> for spam in the chat room. Um, the, your current standings uh, will be used to break ties... So you're not you're not giving up the, the 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 numbers you already have, but we do want to start semi semi fresh. So for the next ten weeks, whoever cl- claims the most titles for our episodes is gonna is gonna win a one of a kind, uh, uh, non professionally designed T shirt by a secret artist. It won't be yeah, Kent. Well, it's not gonna be Kent. When we say non professionally, means that we're not paying someone. We know right. of an artist, like yes. a local artist. Uh, that will, we're basically and, going and, to commission them for and a I, very I, low I will fee. tell you, I will tell you, it is someone who has been on this podcast. Ooh. Someone who, who's, yes. who's, who's made an appearance on this podcast is going I to. I mean, there's only been 145 episodes, people. You can scour and guess. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to, it's one of a time. We're going to print it out. We'll get it the size that you want. We'll probably get it like three sizes bigger so that when it shrinks down, it's the right size. <laughs> um, we'll, but we'll we'll get that and we'll get that mailed out to you. So whoever and and we'll 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 go with the uh, we'll 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 do a thing on the New Year's Eve live stream, uh, during yes. the streamathon for the winner. Yeah, we'll announce the winner. We will uh, probably unveil the design, uh, do the whole thing, make a big deal mm-hmm. of it on the New Year's Eve streamathon. Right. And speaking of the streamathon, we I think we might have a charity lined up. Uh, uh, Crunchy shot me a t- uh, message and gave me a suggestion, and it's looking pretty yes. promising to help yes. some, help some kids so for New Year's. With that being said, though, if you have ideas for charity for the streamathon, keep sending them to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're probably like eighty percent on uh, going with this one, but if somebody finds one that like is like that one plus something, yeah, then. You know, maybe we'll go with that. So yeah, keep keep and, everything coming. All the ideas and the parameters are children, veterans, and um, uh, victims of domestic violence. Uh, the, the really hot topics. Those are the ones that we're really paying yeah. attention to. Children's yeah, yeah. benefits, veterans' benefits, and domestic violence uh, uh, benefits. So those are the three things we're looking for. Charities that that help with that. So. Um, and then of course we got, we got more information coming out for that soon. I'm sure I'm, I'm putting words in Kent's mouth, but, uh, that's going to happen. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so, Way more stuff to come. All right. On, and, on um, all. we, we have, uh, we have, uh, I got a little something to say about this this week. Challenge accepted. Oh, oh. Doing other things in these streets. No, that's crazy. This looks like a job for Amos's ball oh, shit. on the ritual misery podcast. We have been challenged to get PewDiePie on the podcast as part of the Amos's Ball segment, and I have an update. I have an update oh. for getting PewDiePie on the podcast. Oh, shit. Okay, so he called and said he's coming on next week? Pretty close. Pretty close. Oh, okay. Pretty close. Um, I decided I'm taking his name off the list, and he's never going back on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Is... <sighs> Uh, yeah. So at the top of the show, actually it was in the pre-show. We, we talked about, um, with Shannon, uh, you know, how do you feel about language and yeah. Okay. Uh, an occasional S or an F is fine, but let's not get racist. Let's not get, uh, you know, sexist or overly, you know, whatever. Um, and, uh, one of the things that we absolutely do not, do not, do not, do not allow on this show is the N word. Yeah. Yep, and um, and, and so not somebody... because we're afraid of it, but because we Kent and I aren't the right people to eliminate the stigma of it, and that's the only way it's well, going to go away. So here's yeah, here's the thing: some of our our past uh, post shows, we have had discussions about certain things with people that are way more qualified than me and Amos to have uh, intelligent, uh, informed discussions about that word uh just saying that word on our show is not gonna fly um and we're yeah we're just not gonna do that so yep and we're um, not gonna tolerate those who 
blow it off so yeah. flagrantly. And um, yeah, whether or not uh, the intentions were there, the act is he's he's guilty well, of the act. So it's the, we're moving on. Yeah, and uh, just just to just to reiterate too, just just because someone like said that word and may you know maybe we didn't understand the context or whatever, not the case. But let's just say that it was. <laughs> We're not. That's not why we're blowing them off. It's because of the flippant, like, "Oh, what's the fucking big deal, man? Yeah. Like, it's not that." That's the reason. Yeah. More so than the actual. Yeah. The the, yeah, the nonchalance, so. the 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 presumption of acceptance is doesn't fly. Yep. Doesn't fly. So. Yep. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> <clears throat> now we do. Uh, we do. I do have another stinger here, and this is one of my favorite stingers, and it's not even ours. We're using by Creative Commons or uh, whatever. We're, we're using copyrighted shit, and we don't expect them to yell <laughs> at us for it. We're stealing this one. <laughs> now, we had a TED Talk lined up, and then we realized that we hadn't asked Shannon if she had one. So then she said, oh, yes, I have one. And Kent and I watched it, and we were like, oh, yes, she has one. Um, yep. I think we had actually both seen this before, but we hadn't talked about it on the show. Um, it's really awesome. Uh, Emily Wapnick has a talk called Why Some of Us Don't Have One True Calling. And Shannon, would you like to give us a little introduction on this? Sure. So um, she goes into this TED Talk by asking, like, how many people in the audience have actually ever had somebody say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And everybody's like, yeah, ever, I've been asked that yep. multiple times. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, of course I have. I'm asked and that today. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it, it happens <laughs> until you're into adulthood. It keeps on happening. People just expect you to know and people expect you to have like this one true calling. And she discusses how people don't all necessarily just have one true calling. And sometimes you might be a, a multipotentialite, which is her idea of saying that it, it's like a jack of all trades. But I like the name multipotentialite because it allows you to have multiple potentials for your life. You don't have to just focus on one thing and be an expert in one thing. So um, she she goes through the talk and kind of explains like what is a multipotentialite. And they have three main uh, topics that multi multipotentialites are really good at. And those include idea synthesis, um, rapid learning and adaptability. So each of those things explained is basically like, uh, you ha you have a way about you of being able to adapt to your surroundings so you can change direction depending on what kind of job you're currently seeking. Uh, rapid learning so you're able to learn new things all the time. Like so for me, that's huge because I have to do a new segment every single week. So I'm constantly learning something new. So I've really developed a skill of being able to rapidly learn something and then develop it to the point where I can explain it on camera. So that's huge for me. And then idea synthesis is where you take like two different topics or even more if you want to and combine them into something that you love and something that you can like make money off of or something that you can grow out of or some dream that you might have. Um, to me, I'm definitely a multi-potentialite because, you know, just like I explained earlier, I did building computers and theater. And then I took those two things and podcasting was perfect for me. And now I'm able to continue learning every single week. And whether it's learning about ham radios or Arduinos or hacking a hacker up or SDR or building a computer or whatever it might be, like all these different things. Like I have so many different obsessions. Like I'm even trying to teach myself Japanese and I'm trying to play a ukulele. So I'm, I'm able to learn all these different things, just like self-teaching. And I'm constantly excited about learning something new. And I don't think it's a bad thing to not be an expert in just one thing. I think it's awesome to have all these different interests because you're able to network you're able to talk to so many different people and you're constantly passionate about something like you never get bored with your life and for me i love being a jack of all trades i love being a multi-potentialite because i continue to be passionate i continue to love things so that's why this this ted talk spoke to me so much is because when she said that i was just like i don't feel bad for not being an expert anymore like I feel so much better about myself as a person and I don't feel so self-conscious. Mm. And I feel like a lot of other people feel that way too. I personally identified with it because I've been told by more than one person that I should really just pick a passion. 
Um, yep. I, I can't be a, 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 a Dragonlance geek and a computer nerd and a photographer and want to do improv and podcast. <laughs> all, you know, and I'm like, no, I can. My, yeah. my, my, the hard things for me are being a father, being a husband. Those are the, those are the things that I, that don't come naturally to me because I didn't have influences growing up. So, you know, I'm, I'm winging yeah. that on my own. The other stuff just comes natural. You want, you want to put on an improv show? I'll make it ask myself in front of everybody and, <laughs> and have a beer afterwards and just laugh at the whole thing. Like these things yeah. come natural, you know, it's the, the, the stuff that, that is hard for me to really grasp are the things that I didn't really have an anchor in, in the first place. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like I agree with everything that that both of you just said. And Amos, I, what you said, made me think of like things that are not compatible. So like, yeah, you can be all these different things. You can be a podcaster. You can be a you know improv, whatever. All these different things, but certain things you can't you can't be both. Like you can't be a, a you know a husband and a player. You know, right. you can't be like a, well, well, good, a good pyromaniac thing, of those, and a firefighter. Yeah, neither you one know, of those come natural to me. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's certain things that that maybe aren't incompatible. But but um, all the I you know all the people that we look up to are uh what what's the word again, Shannon? Multi potentialites. Right. Most of the people that we look up to, at least you know, I, I'm not going to speak for you, Shannon, but but me and Amos, most of the people that we look up to are very much multi multi potentialized god that's a hard word to say you, you, i know it is it's very hard to say you have to break uh, it you know, down like man people like multi... like brian brushwood <laughs> is someone that we know in real life um but also like look at history like leonardo da vinci do you think this guy focused on just one thing like per day maybe yeah like <laughs> like the the true heroes <laughs> of history and and role models today are absolutely this they're not just focused on one tiny thing yeah, um, totally. so yeah absolutely i'm yes this is a wonderful wonderful talk shannon i'm so glad that you dropped that in the notes it's not often we both like the same talk <laughs> yeah really wow yeah. yeah but see here's here's the problem is the, the one that you picked earlier that was in there that we're, we we put off until later I, yeah i fucking love that one too like that one was amazing as yeah. well and yeah, I had yeah. I had never even thought of that one before. So we'll we'll get to that one another time. But that's that's oh man, like we had two good TED talks this week. And so <laughs> some weeks were like I watched yeah. fifty three of them and I didn't like any of them. So <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm glad Shannon dropped this one in in there this week because this is this is definitely one that I I feel is definitely universal, especially with the Diamond Club community. Mm. We're so diverse yeah. and everybody is interested in so many different things. And uh, yeah, like it it resonates absolutely. If you want to know how that beer is. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, mine, uh, <laughs> mine just emptied as well. Mm. Amos, I think we have one final thing. I know this is like a, a one and a half times the show that we normally do, but there's there's one more thing that I I think we should do. Um, Shannon, uh, you know how earlier in the show we were we were saying how uh, you know we 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 just learn things about you. Like there's there's things that like we have sources that help us find out information about you and help, help us ask the right questions or guide the conversation scary. the right way. Um, well, it goes, it goes, it goes even further. Uh, we have, we have a team of dumpster divers and, um, and super uh, and like super straight up squirrels. stalkers. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, Oh man, I had a real life stalker. Yo. <laughs> well, we, this, this, I mean, this probably won't be as creepy, but it'll definitely be, <laughs> Uh, be, it'll it'll definitely uh, strike strike a chord, I think. Um, okay, I'm scared. Well, so, I can't be that scared. I've already ousted myself on everything. So, well, you you <laughs> you like to travel, and it's it's one thing to to go and like follow your travel blog and and you know look at your Instagram where you've been to Japan and Hawaii and all these other places that I wish I could go visit and eat some cocos. Um, <laughs> the so the thing is, uh, we found one. It, it's it's a little bit of a of a preview of a trip you were wanting to take, and of course, the, you know how it is in school when you go and take a trip, you got to come back and talk about your summer, right? So yeah. um, we kind of dug up one of those little reports. Um, it's it's a little it's a little bit of a rough draft, we understand, but I mean, it, we're just happy to have found it. Is really what it comes out to. So what are you talking about? 
Okay, I, I mean, I think this was like, uh, what, Amos, like fourth or fifth grade or something like that? Something Probably. That, it, yeah, like a homework yeah. assignment that had been thrown away and our dumpster yeah. divers found it. Yeah, yeah something oh, okay. like that. Um, am I reading it this week or are you reading it this week? Um, well, you, you did a pretty good pretty good job setting it up. I can go ahead and read it. Okay. So, uh, okay. so this is Shannon's um, What Did You Do This Summer uh, report. Yeah. In the encrypted hills of South Dakota, a fire named Gutson Borglum soldered a beer to resemble the head spaces of four U.S. presidents. Using pineapples and negatives, the sculptors <laughs> would chip away tons of podcasts until the manicured nails of the presidents emerged. The presidents include George Washington, the Wookiee of our country, Abraham Lincoln, who preserved the hard drive, <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of JPEG, and Theodore Roosevelt, who is famous for hacking up San Juan Hill in the Spanish-American War. More than 3,000 tourists from all over the multi-potentialite uh, <laughs> the, the ukulele of Mount Rushmore each year. I mean... <laughs> that's, a, that's a very interesting... Um, it, it's, 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 re it's really ahead of its time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, that seems really the good. A lot of the, the things that we did uncover. So so uh, if you if you remember it, uh, what kind of grade did you get on that report? Was that a? Was that a, a I'm guessing it had to have been a, like a B, right? Like, <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure they gave me a C plus just for my grammar. Yeah, uh, I mean, you, you take, you take <laughs> yeah. what you can get though. Right? A lot of words didn't seem to fit the sentences just right. So. <laughs> but, but but there's like a there's like a transcendental. Uh, 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 futurism to it. It's it's really amazing. It, it is. It, it's very philosophical. Yeah, fourth or fifth grade, you're writing stuff like that. And no wonder you're a damn star. Like this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, um, right, uh, it's really good. I thoroughly enjoyed that. If, if people want to learn um, uh, more current events and stop dun dumpster diving and stuff like that, where where can they find out more about uh, the old Shannon Morse? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I am at snubs. Uh, BT Dubs, by the way, if y'all are interested in winning an NES Classic, I'm giving one away on my YouTube account for Tech Thing. So it's over at TEK Thing, and everyone's invited to enter. I hope that we can get some subs out of it for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just happened to get an extra NES Classic, so I decided instead of scalping it to give it away. Um, so FYI. But yeah, at Snubs on Twitter, I'll be announcing it there too. And then YouTube slash Tech Thing, Hack5, and Shannon Morse are my uh, three YouTube channels that I manage. There you go. Very cool. Um, how about it. you, Kent? Yeah, so t Twitter, uh, I'm getting a little more active on there. Uh, everybody needs to like tweet at me to remind me to post stuff because I think I'm you know, kind of funny and interesting at times when I actually post. Uh, but hit me up there at rm underscore del noche. I'm pretty much Del Noche everywhere else. Um, uh, Del Noche 77 on on Twitch, which is, yeah, weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you want to hear what I think about this beer here, you can hit me up on Untapped um, Del Noche over there. Uh, Amos, what about you, man? Where are you at? Uh, first of all, you, I'll tell you right now what I think about this beer. It's amazing. It's a pilot series, so it's not going to be around very long. Um, but Alaskan breweries, uh, man, they just keep... They just keep making it happen. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E, in case you didn't realize how to spell that. You can follow uh, the show on Twitter. There it was. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we told her at the beginning of the show no half ass burps. Um, you can follow, <laughs> follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. Uh, submit ideas on our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give us feedback at, at our website, ritualmisery.com. I uh, want to give a very special thanks to the one and only Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music and allowing the internet to use your music, really. Um, and thank you for listening. For Kent, for Shannon, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>